Hi, my name is Nick Shannon. I'm a sophomore at Arizona State University. I'm currently enrolled in Sociology 101, a class that has an honors project portion that asks us to consider sociology theory and consider the person behind the theory and then try and figure out if there's any correlation between that person's life experiences and the validity of their theory. Um, so the first theory I'm going to talk about today is the conflict theory which, as described in the textbook, Getting Started in Sociology, as edited by Lisa Whitaker, is a theory that the top are at the top, perhaps unjustly so. Uh, they're either born into the upper class, or they get there by manipulating political power in an unfair way. And by political power, I usually mean interest group. So not only are the powerful, the powerful unjustly, they also systematically created a way to keep the poor and the lower class poor. Um, Herbert Gantz, one of the pioneering sociologists of the theory, uh, wrote a piece, The Positive Functions of Poverty, which, when summarized by Whitaker, uh, lists several different characteristics of conflict theory. To highlight a few, uh, Whitaker says, the poor provide a low-wage labor pool for, to do society's dirty jobs. Uh, the poor create jobs for the poor and also create jobs to protect the rest of the society from the poor. Uh, the poor subsidize merchants by buying products that others don't want, such as old, dilapidated housing. Uh, the poor also serve as sacrificial lambs for the national economy, understanding that a high or a, some sort of an employment rate keeps inflation from rising. Um, so just so that we have a little bit of a background on conflict theory, let's uh, dive a bit in, more into Herbert Gans. Um, so Herbert Gans was a German-born sociologist who in 1938, at just the age of 11, left Nazi Germany for England. Uh, he eventually came to the United States in 1940, just at the age of 13, and five years later, at the age of 18, finally achieved United States citizenship. So we consider the fact that he was a, he lived in Nazi Germany, okay? One of the most uh, unfair, cultures and societies in the modern era. So there was the poor class who, you know, if you weren't the top class in Nazi Germany, you were not only persecuted, but you were often murdered. Going off that, uh, later on in his life, Herbert Gans, he worked in some housing um, after his schooling where he designed neighborhoods, essentially, uh, before turning to academia. But once he turned to academia, he came up with his first piece, and perhaps some would say his most influential piece, um, the 1962 uh, Urban Villagers, in which he described a West End Boston town that the rise and the fall of what he considered a urban ghetto. Uh, so, you know, knowing what we know that he's from Nazi Germany and what he witnessed and then coming here as an immigrant and then also spending all this time working in housing with essentially the poor people and seeing how they're just kept and oppressed, such as in his West End Boston town and the Urban Villagers, it is becoming more apparent why there is some correlation between his theory and his life experiences. But that is not to negate the validity of his theory at all. I think that the theory is still very valid and still very active in our society. In particular, the part that sticks out to me the most is that the poor create jobs for the poor, <laughs> to serve the poor, essentially. So his example was a pawn shop owner. Uh, my example would be people who work in the public sector all the time and interact with people who may be poor all the time, such as nonprofit employees, uh, firefighters, policemen, educators. These people are trying to help the poor, but are, you know, kept with low wages, if that's how we're going to mark whether or not they're poor or not. And... It just seems that, that it is a cycle, in fact, that it would seem more logical that these people who are trying to break the cycle to raise the poor up, if that is the goal of society, would be paid more. But they're not. Going off this train of thought, if we think about the most sacrificial jobs with the least monetary gain, consider the armed forces. These people who are give, sometimes giving the ultimate sacrifice to keep us safe, are kept down monetary-wise and, you know, perhaps socially. Is the idea here to have people working to keep 
the powerful powerful. I think that's very prevalent. I think now with the upcoming holiday season, we have to consider privilege. And when we're privileged, we have to consider not just being thankful for being privileged. We can't stop the conversation there. We have to take it a step further into thinking, okay, yes, I am privileged, but am I playing into the society that keeps others from being as privileged as I am? I think that once we investigate this a little bit more and think about it internally, if everyone thinks, am I doing something that keeps others from having the same privileges as me? I think then is when we can start to change the systematic uh, manipulation that Gans describes.